Okay, what is going on everyone, and welcome back to the channel. It is your host TKK here, and we are back with another set of tournament replay analyses. This time, we are taking a look at Zero Used Premier League. Uh, so if you're interested in analyzing some high-level ZU gameplay, feel free to stick around. There are timestamps below for all of the different games. Um, at this point in the season, we've been having kind of a tough time with the regular, you know, with the regular season weeks. So we really need to pick up a win here. So let's see if we're able to get it done. Uh, we have. Uh, all of our guys working really hard this week, and hopefully uh, we have some really good games to watch. So let's get into it. Game number one, we have Danny facing off against Five Dots. Right off the bat, we see Five Dots is bringing a Sun Hyper Offense, or Sun Build. Um, with the two Sun Setters being Uxie, uh, just a generally good Mon. Actually has a pretty fast speed tier, considering how bulky it is. And of course has access to Rocks, Yawn, uh, good pivot moves like that, or good support moves like that. The other setter being Lipard, Prankster, Heat Rock, Sunny Day is also really valuable. Uh, then there's the three Abusers, Shifty, Rapidash, and Ivysaur. And of course a Quillfish, which might seem a little out of sh out of place at first, but more likely than not is just a pivot, fight, you know, another fight resist, um, a spike setter, etc. So. We have that in play. Danny has a fortunately decent matchup versus Sun. As you can see, we don't have a great fire resist, or we have a lot of fire weaknesses, but we do have one of the better fire resists in the in the tier, which is Hakamo. Uh, you don't see this Pokemon too often, but it matches up well in, in the scout and actually ended up being a really great asset here because of its very high bulk, its um, resistance to fire, its immunity to Sludge Bomb and Weather Ball, and um, its ability to Dragon Tail and phase stuff out. So this is going to be a very key piece for us. Um, um, another thing to see is Persian Alola. We don't, I don't think Danny's used this Pokemon. I don't think our SS has used this Pokemon too much. So it's always interesting to see what this can do. It has a very nice speed tier. Being able to outspeed Uxie and taunt it is huge um, and can put us in a nice advantageous position right in the beginning of the game or even in the middle of the game by denying the taunt or by denying the, sun, uh, the sunny day. So let's get right into it. Obviously this type of game, we're just going to see how Danny decides to navigate around this. Uh, not too much to talk about from preview. You know, there's big threats, etc. I mean, Rapidash. One thing there, I guess, to note is that Rapidash, you know, there's one concern with Rapidash that could be flame or play rough for Hakmo. Um, but the problem with that is that, well, not the problem, but what's more likely to be the case is that this usually runs, you know, Sunny or Swords Dance, Flare Blitz, Solar Blade, and then like High Horsepower or Wild Charge. So play rough, probably not in the cards here, and that's going to be really good for us. So let's get right into it. We are going to see the Uxie lead versus the Persian Alola lead. Um, this is a good lead for us, obviously being able to taunt early. We're going to taunt the Quillfish even as it comes in. It's going to intimidate us. This is going to deny it from setting up any sort of spikes. We decided to go for a foul play turn one, but we do get hit with some Rocky Helmet recoil plus Poison poison Jab, excuse me, and then Poison. So we're down to 50% early, which is not ideal. But we can pivot into Articuno here as Five Dots makes a nice aggressive switch into Uxie. Nice play on his part. Um, trying to get the sun up, trying to, you know, force hazards up, etc. We're just going to go for a freeze dry, try to get a little bit of chip off if we can as we actually get yawned. Which is interesting. Um, we decided to pivot into Alchemy, which enables Five Dots to get the rocks up. He's now gonna Sunny Day as we Aromatherapy, get rid of that poison, give Persian a little bit more longevity, as it might be useful. It seems useful for Uxie or something in the in the in the later game. Uh, at this point, Five Dots decides to go for a Yawn. Um, and you know this yawn u-turn combination can be really really good because it enables a free switch in But the problem with that is that you use up two turns, right? You already use one turn, you know sunny day is its own turn and then yawn plus u-turn is also another turn like set of two turns So this is nice for enabling a you know safe switch or whatever But it doesn't really it does come at the cost of use it utilizing a lot of your sun turns. So Ivysaur comes in now uh, and Danny, I think, positioned this really nicely. He decides to go Tangela, which is going to bait in something like Ivysaur, and that's going to enable him to go into Hakamo, which is a pretty good stop to Ivysaur. So this works out well because, you know, of Bulletproof, you are immune to, um, uh, what do you call it? Um... Weather Ball and Sludge Bomb and all that. So Solar Beam is all Five Dots has. As you can see, just bounces off. And unfortunately, we are going to miss a big Dragon Tail there, which uh, isn't great. Uh, but it kind of ends up working out because Five Dots goes for another Solar Beam. We end up resting that off. Um, so Rest Hakamo is huge here, being able to continue to be a fire resist throughout the entire course of the game. And Five Dots decides to you know make the correct play, go for growth. And we fortunately actually Rest Hawk a Dragon Tail and remove the Ivysaur from the field. So that works out really well for us. We end up at full health, so it's not bad, I suppose, on that very first miss. As Uxie is just going to U-turn, that's going to enable us to draw out another Sleep Turn and waste that. We're going to Sleep Talk a Drain Punch, so we have seen the full set. We do get hit with some Rocky Helmet Chip here, but that's okay. Hakamo is still relatively healthy, and now we can go into Articuno. 
on a T wave. And again, T wave is annoying, no denying that, but we do have aromatherapy and all that, so we should be okay. Opponent's gonna go back into Uxie, we are gonna defog. At this point, five dots can't really yawn U turn us, so um, because of the para, so we're just gonna freeze drag, get some more chip down. He's gonna sunny day, we're gonna defog. Fortunately, no para is going through, and at this point, we're gonna be kind of just stuck. For five dots, he doesn't want to switch in, I guess, on a freeze dry. Um, and like, he can't switch in any of the grass types, excuse me, on a freeze dry. He can go rapid ash, you know, there's no denying that. And I think he could have probably done that the previous turn, um, but I guess he was just kind of fishing for that para. Um, so we do defog, but what that has done is basically wasted so many turns of sun that we're in a pretty decent spot. We can go into Stun Fist Galar here on a Flare Blitz. We're going to just sack that. It's not very useful in this matchup. We end up getting a lot of recoil off, which is huge. And that's going to enable our Persian Alola to come in, which does outspeed Rapid Ash and can threaten it with a foul play. So the speed tier of Persian Alola is very, very nice here. And two foul plays will be able to get the job done versus Quillfish. So that Aromatherapy early from Danny was really smart um, as Persian as you can see, is very, very valuable in this matchup. So that works out well. Shiftry is going to come in now, but only has two turns to really take advantage of this. So it will be able to knock off the Tangela and it probably has Heat Wave. So Danny is going to pivot into the all Creamy here. Really nice play. Just wasting turns. Unfortunately, gets crit, but for at the same time, fortunately, Sun has run out. So we're in a pretty good spot. Ivysaur is going to come in as we decide to just recover up. And, you know, we're going to see a good... Uh, double from five dots bringing the Uxie in on the uh, pretty obvious Hakamo um, But at this point this thing doesn't have psychic so it can't really touch us and yes He can set up Sun and all that but um, he's kind of in an awkward spot so Danny can just kind of go into Articuno um, Kind of play the same game where we're just wasting turns and the only thing that we're gonna allow in is Rapidash Which we have you know a full health Hakamo to handle at this point so and of course a Persian to outspeed and revenge kill as well. So defog that away, fortunately. At this point, you have to switch out. So you decide to sack the Persian um, as it comes in on a Flare Blitz. That's fine. Um, Danny, I think at this point, is going to go into the Akamo and uh, I think just sleep talk and try to get it. Or yeah, sleep talk wakes up. That's fine. Um, is going to eat a high horsepower with the crit. Does absolutely nothing. Dragon Tail does some uh, pretty nice damage. Forces that out. Again, Ivysaur really can't touch us. 19% is pitiful. And we just continue to Dragon Tail, waste turns, and put himself put ourselves in good position. So here comes a Flare Blitz. It does 23%, but that's fine. Hakamo can just rest that off. And Five Dots never really wants to switch anything into here because eating a let's say like shiftry coming in and eating trying to knock this thing off is so risky because of drain punch so this is like a fine spot for us to be in we can just kind of sit all over this team and honestly drain punch plus uh dragon tail is doing some pretty good damage so we're gonna sleep talk another drain punch get a little bit of chip off on the uxi and now we can go back in articuno and kind of rinse and repeat the situation so stealth rock goes up sunny day we're gonna get fully para they're gonna u-turn uh they're gonna bring the rapid ash in as we end up defogging back into the Hakamo. Swords Dance does come out this turn, so this is where things could potentially get dicey, but high horsepower really isn't doing that much, and fortunately for Danny, you can just Dragon Tail that out, get rid of it, Ivysaur comes in, this thing can't touch us, Uxie comes right back in, it's gonna eat a Dragon Tail, <laughs> and honestly, this Hakamo is just, it's kind of funny, because it's just kind of sitting here. Um, Danny does not want to get its his Violet removed, so he decides to go into Tangela, nice play there, just playing smart. Um, as now Tangela can actually be a little annoying with Sludge Bomb. Five Dots does go into uh, Ivysaur, which doesn't take it super well, and Hakamo can just come right back in and do what it's been doing this entire game. So, Weather Ball here, <laughs> we are immune to. Dragon Tail is going to phase that out. And uh, yeah, we're, we're looking pretty good at this point because every time Danny or every time Five Dots goes into a knock user, we can just kind of pivot into Alchemy or Tangela and then force damage onto the team elsewhere. So now Ivysaur goes down. Uxie is going to come in and try to get, you know, Sunny Day up one more time. We're just going to recover, waste one turn. Smart play there from Danny. And uh, we'll be able to remove the Uxie now. We do play with Rocks, but that's fine. Um, because at this point, Five Dots is running out of gas. He doesn't have a lot in the tank to break past this team. Even a plus two Swords Dance, you know, plus two Flare Blitz Sun Boosted will not do enough to uh, Hakamo, and we can just Drain Punch and actually get a decent amount of health back. Um, so even if Five Dots decides to go for that Morning Sun play, we're fine. So Dragon Tail is going to remove uh, the Rapid Ash, and we are going to get Encore into the into the Dragon Tail. That's a nice play from Five Dots, but does take 50% in return, and. Um, now Rapid Ash will be able to get the Morning Sun off, but hey, why don't we just keep Dragon Tailing? There's no reason not to really at this point. We go into Articuno now, decide to just sack this thing. It's probably lost a lot of its utility because of knock and fire type moves everywhere, so we can just sack it. 
opponent decides to go into Lipard as we end up defogging those rocks away. That's pretty nice for us, actually. And we can preserve the Articuno and actually decide to go Hakamo. And uh, I think we end up just drain punching, knocking out the Lipard. And all we really need to do now is last, you know, six turns. So. Rapidash comes in, it's Flare Blitz is going to just come short, which is really, really fortunate for us. We're going to Dragon Tail it out of there, Shiftry comes in, um, we're going to pivot into Articuno now, just to sack that, waste some turns, they're going to knock us, doesn't end up uh, doing anything. They can't growth here because they can't risk Freeze Dry, so we're going to pivot back into Hakamo on the sack, down it goes, and uh, we can go into the Alchemy, which should be able to... Uh, force this thing out we actually end up pivoting into the tangela trying to force an or i guess i don't know i feel like all probably might have been able to take that hit um so maybe danny was trying to pivot in on the rapid ash and like sludge bomb poison it or something either way he ends up catching a solar blade which he can eat relatively well but the heat wave is still imminent which is the problem so danny is going to be forced to go back into the all fortunately at this point he is wasting turns um so it's okay and we're going to pivot back into Tangela now, as the opponent does decide to growth. Pretty risky play there, um, but they have run out of turns, and things are looking decent for us. Because they can Heat Wave, sure, that's fine. Now we can uh, just go back into All Creamy. We should be able to take this hit. 25% uh, left. We're just going to recover that off. No reason not to. They're going to go for another Heat Wave. We're just going to recover this off as well, I believe. Or we call mine, excuse me, on this turn. Smart play. And then uh, Rapid Ash is going to come in. And Rapid Ash me uh is gonna struggle with versus tangela because they can morning sun yes no denying that but uh we just have to get a little bit of luck with sludge bomb poison and we should be okay because recoil will be able to uh keep this thing basically dead um so we're gonna see some more morning suns and yeah rapid ash will have be at some point forced to just go for flare blitz and take so much recoil that it's in a tough spot it also can't morning sun forever because it only has eight pp and he's already used up so many of them so this is his last one has to hope that somehow he ends up living the recoil plus the poison um, Flare Blitz ends up knocking us out from full, but Rapid Ash will go down to that, and Danny ends up picking up a win. So that first turn poison was definitely fortunate, um, but I think we had it in the bag uh, regardless of that. I'm not sure, but it seemed like it. And yeah, I think it was a pretty well played game. We had a very nice matchup with the Hakamo, but Sun really was that powerful to the point that it was able to apply so much pressure um, that even having such a good answer to it. Uh, wasn't enough. Uh, it was able to overwhelm it. So we can pause it there and get into the next game. Okay, and here we have game number two. We have OJR facing off against Ninja. Um, matchup here, we have Stall versus Balance. So we'll just see what Ninja decides to do to break passes. One of the biggest threats always to these Stall types of builds is, in my eyes, Nasty Plot, Articu or Nasty Plot Skunk Tank, which um, at preview looks very, very threatening. Our best answer is probably Articuno Galar, or sorry, Artic Articuno uh, Kanto. Um, but that can also get overwhelmed, especially with Sludge Bomb Poisons and stuff like that. And um, it could also get pressured by like Corrosive Gas from Skunk Tank. So that can be threatening. Bolt Hunt also looks interesting, but we do have decent answers versus that. So let's see, this we'll just get into this game because I think this is a long one. Um, Articuno lead versus Tangela lead, obviously a decent matchup for us, but we don't want to get knocked. Um, we are, but you know, Freezer at the same time is also like very, very good to hit, the, you know, hit that thing off. So OJR is just going to fire that off into the Rapid Ash. Um, it will be able to eat that very comfortably. We can go into Mill Tank, eat the Flare Blitz because of Thick Fat, potentially put our rocks up here. Burn isn't a huge deal. We should have, um, Heal Bell somewhere on this team, perhaps on the Mill Tank itself. As Ninja decides to, uh, Morning Sun as we get a Toxic off. That's pretty nice. Heal Bell could be on the Articuno from their side, so maybe that won't last, but we're okay as of right now. Um, that will help kind of wear it down over the course of uh, the game if we're able to play aggressive and try to deny heal bells. But that isn't going to be the easiest uh, with a stall team, but maybe like with Clefairy forcing a knock on it, they won't want to stay in a heal bell essentially. So, um, oh, mess that up. We're going to, anyway, so yeah, we're going to see Palisand come in, Articuno, Rocks go up, Defog, Tangle is going to come in on the Bolton, eats a crunch very comfortably, Volt Switch comes out on this turn, that's fine. We can force a knock here as the opposing Tangela comes in and loses its Violet. Um, we're going to go Articuno of our own, and we're actually going to get knocked as well. Not ideal. Obviously, losing your boost isn't great, but it should be okay. Um, Articuno of their own is going to come in, and you know this sequence is going to play out a little bit. Um, we're going to see the Mill Tank come in, and now the Skunk Tank comes in on an anticipated Toxic. So good play there from the opponent. And now things could get tricky, potentially. We do have Stun Viscalar, so we should be okay. But you can see how that actually you know, does a decent chunk. And of course, we do have Leftovers, and that's fine. Um, but we are 
the opponent is incrementally making progress versus you know stun base. Every time it comes in to take a dark pulse, it's losing about 12 or so percent. So we're gonna see the default come out here as the opponent is gonna just freeze dry. We're gonna get a little bit of freeze dry worn out. Bolton comes in on a mill tank. We're gonna anticipate either a volt switch or just assume that we can take anyone hit and mill drink up. Now skunk tank is gonna come in and it is going to flamethrower. And that's interesting, you don't see that too often, but if it is indeed nasty plot, then this is a very, very tough matchup because at plus two, uh, Articuno, especially with rocks up, Articuno is in trouble, Stunfisk is in trouble, these are all in trouble. Um, Spirit Tomb potentially, um, obviously can take hits, but it's just kind of setup fodder, and uh, with uh, Tangela, it's also going to struggle, right? So this is uh, this is looking pretty tough. We'll have to see how JR decides to manage this. It's going to be able to knock or move the Culber here. That's not huge, really. We don't have too many other <laughs> Dark-type moves, so that's fine. We're going to get the Defog off. Bolton's going to come in. Clefairy's going to come in. Tangela's now going to come in on a Volt Switch, so Ninja's able to make some progress, and now Stunfist comes in, or sorry, Skunk Tank comes in on the stun fisk and progress is being made slowly but surely versus us so it's getting a little spooky um every time this sequence plays out articuno on articuno and then boltund comes in on tangela and then volt switches into skunk tank like things start to get dicey for us we start to lose uh health on our one check really so Bolton comes in yet again. Uh, is gonna Volt Switch here, so nice play here from JR, not going into Tangle and not allowing that for hap not allowing that to happen. But and at the same time, we'll be able to get a Toxic off on the Palisand, which is really nice, uh, meaning that this sequence is better or more in our favor because the opponents can be more pressured to shore up and won't be able to get rocks up, and that means we don't have to waste a turn defogging as you guys have been seeing. So yes, we can freeze right here. They end up getting that Heal Bell off that I was talking about. We didn't see that, so let's actually talk about that real quick. Hold on. Yeah, Articuno comes in. We can freeze dry, sure. Now we're gonna be forced out into mill tank, and they do get that heal bell off. So that toxic, which we did get off on the Palisand and the Rapid Ash, kind of not gonna happen, or not really gonna make a difference at this point. And we're gonna see a double here, uh, getting a little bit more health in the stun fist, which is nice. Really nice play there from um, JR. Now we'll be able to get rocks up. So he's gotten 12%, uh, and that means he can take a couple more skunk tank hits. So. Rocks go right back up, Articuno's gonna come in, you guys know the deal, and the problem with Articuno being knocked so early is you can see how we're forced to, we are so forced to come in hard on Palisand, waste a turn defogging, and then they can play aggressive, like going Rapid Ash or something like that, so things start to get a little bit awkward. Mill Tank is gonna come in now, SD comes out, H, uh, High Horsepower ends up doing 50%, which is pretty insane, and Milk Drink does heal it up, so Ninja decides to go for a second Sword Dance to really put the pressure on. Um, another high horsepower is going to do 63. Uh, Mill tank will be able to get a toxic off, which is nice, but this 1v1 is pretty much lost as uh, the opponent's going to be pivoting into Spirit Tomb now. And Ninja will just go for another high horsepower out of the 63%. And Rapid Ash is looking extremely, extremely threatening. So it's really just the combination of the two of them that's like really hard to handle. Tangela is going to come in now and it's not going to want to face off against Skunk Tank. So another flamethrower is going to bring that Skunk, a uh, Stun Fisk, excuse me, down to 50. We're hitting at we're at turn 50 now at this point, and we're kind of seeing the same sequences play out. Palisand comes in, it's gonna throw up rocks. We go Articuno, we have to defog those away. They're gonna double on the Articuno, make some you know play aggressive, etc. They actually end up getting frozen with our Clefairy, and now Skunk Tank can set up a nasty plot. The opponent or we're gonna go for a leech seed and that's fine and all but the problem is that things are starting to look a little dicey sludge bomb here is gonna crit and actually knock out spirit tomb which is a little unfortunate because we would have at least been able to force a little bit more leech seed chip um assuming spirit tomb was able to take that hit without the crit but now things are looking really really tough so articuno comes in articuno um is gonna speed in the um there articuno we're gonna go for a haze Heal Bell comes off now, removing the poison, and now Rapid Ash is back in business. Uh, gonna be problematic for our team as well. We get to bring the Tangela in, and you can already see where this is going. We're slowly but surely kind of getting dismantled just because of how much pressure Rapid Ash plus Skunk Tank are uh, applying to us, and we don't have a real good way of forcing progress or denying progress, I guess, on their end. So. At this point, I'm just going to kind of speed through this a little bit because uh, this game is starting to get a little bit more repetitive. Skunk Tank comes in on the, uh, on the uh, what do you call it, on the Milk Drink. It's going to set up a Nasty Plot. Flamethrower is going to come short, but EQ won't do that much. I mean, it will do quite a bit, but won't be able to knock it out. And with Black Sludge Recovery, the Skunk Tank's not in too much trouble. Dark Pulse is going to knock that thing out. 
Uh, Articuno is going to come in now. Articuno is going to freeze dry, heal bell, defog. Rapidash comes in. It's going to high horsepower, put some pressure on Flare Blitz, knocks out the mill tank, and we've, we, we're slowly but surely just getting our stall dismantled, unfortunately. So, good matchup from the opponent. Good prep. They did some good prep, and they brought a pretty solid team into us. And you can see how we can continue to talk about these turns, but there's not really much merit. Like, Sludge Bomb is going to do 50. Clefairy is going to Moonblast knock us out, but that's just going to enable Rapidash to come in. Morning Sun up, etc., etc. Rapidash now gets a SD. We uh, do get a Toxic off, but the problem is that um, the opponent can always find an opportunity to freeze dry, especially because our Rocker is dead, um, Stunfisk. So we don't even care. They don't even care about letting this thing get knocked. So this sequence is going to play out more and more, and maybe JR can get something to happen. But finally, a plus two Flare Blitz connects here. Leech Seed is a little annoying, and we're uh, gonna try to get a little bit of health back with Giga, but it's not looking too great. Flare Blitz is gonna come out here, it's gonna knock out Clefairy outright, and uh, Flare Blitz is gonna knock out Tangela, and then that's gonna be game, because Articuno cannot get the job done versus Bolton, and that's, that's that. So, pretty tough one, but that's just how it goes. I think we can pause it there and get into the next game. Okay, and here we have my SS game. We have me facing off against Quinn. Um, I'm using Sun this time around, so a lot of the same structures here. I'm using a fourth abuser instead of a Quillfish. And looking at this matchup, I was like, okay, this should be decent. Um, I should be able to force a lot of progress with Ivysaur, uh, Shiftry, and Rapidash. So I think we can kind of just get into the game here and kind of uh, forgot a lot of the intricacies of this game or what I was thinking exactly. But we can talk about it. I'm pretty sure it'll come back to me as we play through it. So. Uh, pawn lead is always going to be annoying for me, and perhaps I think lead-wise, I could have probably done better by leading uh, perhaps like Rapidash, and then doubling into like Uxie or something um, on like the Polyrath. That might have been better. Um, so pawn lead wasn't great. I'm going to get knocked off early, but it's fine. I figured just get my, you know, get my sun up. Um, Cryo is going to come in now as I throw out my rocks, and they are just going to rapid spin as I believe I just encore them into that. Yeah, so wanted to encore them on the spin and or into that, and I'm going to go for a U turn now, enabling a free switch. I do get poison pointed, which is a little unfortunate, but that's fine. I can go into Rapid Ash now, and I can basically I have Calc this that at the beginning, uh, plus two Solar Blade is a 75 percent ish roll, depending on the spread and everything, but it should be at least at the at worst a 50 50. So I figured I should just go for it. Unfortunately, I do not get the roll here, which is kind of annoying, but it's okay. Um, but I am forced to take a lot more chip than I would want, you know, take Scald plus Rocky Helmet and I waste a Sun Turn, which is actually a little bit more annoying. I do break past the, uh, back to Poly, excuse me, I do break past the Polyrath, but at the same time, I've used up so many turns and at the same time, I've also taken so much chip that the Rotom wa or the Rotom can come in, the Scarf Rotom can come in and Revenge kill me, so. That's fine. At this point, I decide to just sack the Rapidash. Probably not the best play, but with one turn of Sun left, I didn't know, I didn't really know what I sh I didn't really feel like going like Ivysaur and then like allowing, you know, Ponyard to come in and like, sat, you know, forcing a knock. I guess I could have just sacked that, a sacked the Uxie after and then go into Rapidash and kind of like rerun the whole thing uh, with like Flare Blitz or something. And perhaps that was a better play. Um, so I think maybe the sack was unnecessary looking back on it, but yeah, so I didn't play that too well. Stunfist is going to come in. I'm just going to go into Uxie now. I'm going to set up my Sun. They're going to go for Rocks. On this turn, I thought they would predict the Encore and um, uh, switch out was my play. So they went they went go for Rocks, and I really should have just Encored them in retrospect. But, you know, I really thought they would predict it. But I guess they read me and understood that I would predict that, so they decided to stay in. I go on Ivysaur on a Discharge, and I think I get Parrot here which is a little annoying. Or I don't on this turn, but I will on the next turn. So I go for a growth here to try to break past this because I don't think uh, Solar Beam ends up knocking it out. They do get a para there, which is a little unfortunate, but that's fine because what I'm kind of trying to set up towards is like Shiftry trying to win this game because it kind of messes up everything on their team under Sun. Uh, so I just need some breaking power. I'm going to go for a Weather Ball here. That was also probably unnecessary. I was just trying to catch the Roselia or something stupid. I should have just gone for Solar Beam, killed this thing. And I'm just kind of wasting turns at this point. So this sequence is just really, really bad on my end. I'm making some over predictions. I get fully parried there. I'm wasting turns. I'm not playing great. I end up sacking the Ivysaur. I go back into Uxie now to get my sun up. Now I can bring my, sh my Shiftry in, which will be able to Solar Blade and knock out a Stunfist. Fortunately, no static paralysis. And uh, they are going to go into Ponyard here. And at this point, I'm like, okay, this is okay. Because what I can do is Heatwave this, knock it out. Um, and then from there, um, 
my Leafeon plus Shiftry should be able to clean up the rest of this team, especially because I still have seven turns of Sun in the back. And unfortunately, what's going to happen is I missed the Heat Wave in the Sun. So I agree that I didn't play the very first, or I played the first turns okay. I played the middle pretty terribly. Um, not very happy with how I did that. But this, and I was, I think basically what happened here was that I took a pretty bad path. I was like, okay, I'm just going to break with Ivysaur, etc. And then win with Shiftry plus Leafeon in the late game. And I could have probably preserved my pieces better and like done a little bit better to like make more progress than what I actually did, which is pretty pathetic. Um, and I kind of set up for this, but I got pretty unlucky. I got a little unlucky with this miss, but I think I should probably blame myself more for just poor playing. So end up uh, pretty much losing after this because I can't do anything about this. Sucker Punch is going to knock this out and then I can't break past the Pawn here and that is going to be the game. So pretty tough one. Um, didn't play too great was a little um kind of got into my own head a little bit with some of my turns got some turns wrong and uh i lost so good game to my opponent was fun and i think we can leave it at that okay and here we have the next one we have gray bomb facing off against water bends uh in sm so teams here are interesting uh i like our cacturn i feel like cacturn Always is a, a pretty big threat. Dark Pulse looks very, very hard to switch in for our opponent's team. And if we can get a spike up, that's also going to be really nice. I think Kadabra is always an interesting Pokemon. Just because of how much power it can have, especially if it's a Life Orb set. Um, obviously, you know, Mr. Mime is kind of a good resist, but like um, Shadow Ball still hits that relatively hard. And um, we should be able to overwhelm throughout the course of the game. From their side, nothing really stands out to me. I guess their own Mr. Mime could be annoying because its stab combination hits us relatively hard. So we'll to see exactly how Grey Bomb decides to um, uh, play around this. So Wishy's going to come in on Rapidash. Tough lead for us, obviously. And we decide to actually reveal the Z Gigavolt Havoc on the very first turn. That's a really nice... Uh, that really worked out nicely. I like that a lot um, as uh, U-Turn is going to come out and we actually get a Flame Body Burn. So this turn one, which seemed to be really, really bad at first, um, actually ended up being pretty excellent as we end up getting 81%. We get a Burn and we keep our Rapidash very, very healthy. So Torterra is now going to come in. Um, we decided to go for a Wisp here, just putting this thing, uh, crippling this thing a little bit. We end up living the EQ because of the Burn and already off the bat, we have two Burns. We've gotten so much... We've made so much progress with just this one Rapid Ash, so we're looking really, really good. We decided to switch into Cacturn now. We're not super afraid of anything this thing can do, especially Burnt, and that's going to enable the Cacturn to really start to, you know, apply pressure. They said the opponent decides to go into Savali Poison. We get that first layer of spike up. That's going to be really nice uh, for helping, you know, punish pretty much everything. Everything is grounded here, so we're in a pretty good spot. So Valley Poison um, is just going to U-turn as we go Comala, and that's going to enable Furfru to come in. And they end up going for another U-turn, which actually does quite a bit of damage, but we are able to stay in here and I think just go for our own Rapid Spin, removing those rocks, which is going to help our Rapid Ash in uh, the rest of the game. So U-turn is Kadabra now, and we can apply pressure, right? Psychic is going to do, honestly, a good chunk to Mr. Mime. And if this thing wants to come in a second time, it's really not going to appreciate a Shadow Ball. So we decide to sack the Komala. We're going to go into Furfru now, obviously targeting Mr. Mime's poorer... Uh, physical defense. We're gonna get a nice U-turn off on the Torterra and bring a Rapid Ash back in. Torterra is down to 50 or 46%. It's gonna be uh, in range of Flare Blitz. It's gonna go down, and things are looking really, really good. We're up. Uh, we're you know, we're even in the score, but I feel like we definitely have the momentum on our side, and we have also taken quite a big chunk out of the Wishy Washy, and we've gotten a lot of information on their team at the same time. So. We're going to eat a crit earthquake here with the um, golem. Not ideal, but it's okay as we end up living the second one and that's going to enable us to throw up our rocks. That's nice. Um, we're going to pivot back into Furfru now as we should be able to take this because of Fur Coat and uh, threaten it with a normal type move. So knowing this, we can go for a U-turn, put it in the switch, bring our Kadabra right back in and you know, where are the switches? There aren't any. Water Bends decides to sack the Wishy Washy and things are looking really, really good for us. Furfru is going to come in now. Furfru um, is actually going to reveal to be Scarf, or yeah, it's going to be Scarf, right? Yeah, 339 versus 333, yeah, yeah. So it ends up being Scarf, and we actually end up being uh, Focus Sash Counter, which uh, would have worked really well, right? Because if they return, knock us out, that's fine. If they U-turn, we counter whatever comes in and knock that out as well. So that works out really well for Grey Bomb, really nice, uh, nicely done, preserving that Focus Sash, and he's looking really, really good. Like, this is... It's looking pretty much over. I don't see a way for Water Bends to really come out of this alive because Rapidash, Flare Bliss is just going to claim two at KOs and everything. And 
down goes to Valley Poison. Electivire comes in, we can just sack the Kadabra. Earthquake, now go into our Furfru, click return, knock that thing out. Dazzling is going to fail to knock us out, and return is going to get the job done, and that is going to be that. So, Greymon picks up a really, really nice win. Not really much else to say, well played, and we'll get into the next game. Okay, and here we go. We have our second SM game. We have Avon facing off against Raw Melon. Um, or I think it's just Melon. Uh, anyways, team-wise, uh, we do see um, some similarities to the last game. We see a Wishy-Washy Golem, stuff like that. But honestly, a lot of differences. Electivire, another common Pokemon. Uh, we see two Swanna, and then a Marowak. And I like Marowak a lot. I think it's a really, really cool Mon. Unfortunately, our opponent does have one EQ immunity and, of course, one uh, Resist. Which I think Go-Goats are generally pretty bulky. So maybe we can catch those with like a Fire Punch and a Stone Edge. But it might be tough. Um, our Marini looks interesting as well. It uh, depends a lot on the sets of the opposing Pokemon, but <clears throat> we'll see exactly how it all goes down. Our Bouflon also looks really good. If we can set up an SD, if it is that set, um, SD EQ is going to hit this really, really hard. SD EQ return. So let's kind of just get into the game here. We're going to see the Marini lead versus the Wishy Washy. Obviously, a decent lead for us because we can force a knockoff early or put our Toxic Spikes up, and that's actually really, really nice. There's a good chance it's still Valley Poison, as we do see here. Um, but it does, I think even with a Grounded Poison type, Toxic Spikes is still a pretty good um, move because it can force awkward play a lot of the time. So, yes, they can absorb it here, but that's going to enable us to go into Bouffalant. They're going to U-turn on us. It's a good play. They're going to bring in the Golem. Uh, we're going to get a little bit of leftovers back, and we're going to set up a sub as the opponent decides to go for Stealth Rock. So now we're in business, potentially an SD coming out here. Nope, I'm mistaken. We actually are the Cotton Guard set, um, and this is a pretty de demonic set with Cotton Guard, SD, very, very threatening. It's going to be able to set up on physical attackers extremely easily. The opponent decides to go into Wishy Washy now um, as we set up another sub. Wishy-washy, although very powerful, really can't do much, and our return is going to do 70% to them. As yes, they can break our, you know, they can break the sub, sure, but they don't take two of these, so um, they are in a tough spot. They end up playing pretty nice and aggressive, keep denying us from getting a sub. I like that play on their end, um, as I think Avon was predicting the golem from uh, golem to come in, but it's fine. Go Goat comes in now. They are going to be able to get a fast Toxic off on us, and we are going to be able to return and get about 74%, but the damage is being done, as you can see. Like, this thing is really, really, really hard for the opponent's team to handle. Um, Golem is going to take, as you can see, more than a quarter, which is pretty impressive for a resist, and uh, things are looking pretty good for us. Gorgeist is going to come in now. We're going to eat a Stone Edge. Savali so Poison is going to come in as we Synthesis. We are going to get a nice Wisp off on that thing crippling it a little bit putting it on a very 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 slow timer but a timer nonetheless and yeah things are looking decent we'll go marini now as uh the opponent's gonna pivot back into savali poison this is fine they're just gonna go for a u-turn they can't really touch marini and avon is just gonna go for a recover scouting out what they want to go for so gogo -Go comes right back in they are gonna set up a substitute which is a little annoying but we do have sludge bomb which will be able to break that thing sub and we're looking decent we're looking decent for sure Scald's going to come out on this turn, predicting a switch. Nice play there from Avon, catching the Savali for a little bit more damage. T-Bolt does do some good chip to us, but we can recover that off, and, you know, we've successfully forced six more percent on them, so. They're going to U-turn here. Um, Swana is going to come in as we end up getting that, getting that T-Spike up, which is going to force that Savali poison to come in later on. They're going to get a Z Rain Dance off, but we are just going to go for a Sludge Bomb. Um, they do get, you know, this is kind of nice for them because... You know, they get hydration activated, plus plus one speed boost, and then of course 100% hurricanes, but Marini is just so bulky. It's just so insanely bulky. It's able to shrug these off so easily, and we're just wasting uh, we're just wasting turns here. We're going to go Bouffalant now, as it's kind of lost uh, its utility with its, uh, with its Toxic, so it's able to take a couple more turns of rain away from the opponent, and uh, yeah, we're looking okay. Surf knocks that thing out. We're going to go into Electivire now. The opponent is going to be forced out. They're going to go into Savali Poison, which ends up eating a full switch, plus the burn. Marini can come right back in and rinse and repeat what it's been doing this entire game. They're going to go for another U-turn as Swana comes in. We're just going to recover, and baby Pokemon are taking over ZU. That's all you need to know about this, right? Sludge Bomb is going to come out here. It does 26%. Uh, they're going to roost... Um, Electivire comes in, and yeah, we're seeing a lot of the same stuff. Marowak is now going to come in on a predicted switch to Golem. Nice play there, and that is going to enable us to start applying pressure. They're going to go into Swana now, 
and we are just be able to put our rocks up. That's really huge because they've been switching around for free this entire game. So finally being able to punish that Savelli poison a little bit more, Electivire, Go Go, and Inswana is going to be huge for us. We're going to go back into Gorgai Small here as they end up going for a Surf. That works out for us. We're able to eat that, and uh, we're going to Destiny Bond and take them down with us. So that works out really well. Down goes the Swana, one of the bigger threats to our team, and Avon is starting to really look like he's coming ahead. Uh, at this point the golem is kind of the last big roadblock but we were able to eat one eq knock them out with a scald um or nearly knock them out with a scald and of course regen away the health um if you want to we actually ended up to sack the marini that's fine because we can just go into swana or electivire after and uh kind of clean up here sucker punch does do some good damage but earthquake will be able to knock them out um electivire of their own is going to come in we are going to go into Marowak here. No need to risk anything as they end up going for an Ice Punch. Really nice play on their end. That's really, really nice, but it does come short of 2 hit KOing, so we are able to claim a kill with our own Earthquake. Down goes the Savali Poison, and yes, they can go Go-Go. That's fine. We can uh, just go hard into our Swana. As yes, they can uh, go for a Horn Leech, but it doesn't end up 2 hit KOing, or doesn't end up knocking us out, and Swana can just go for a Z. Uh, supersonic Sky Strike, knocking, knocking them out and putting ourselves in a position to win because if this Electivire is Scarf, as I'm anticipating, it can only lock itself into one move and uh, no move will be able to clean up the rest of the team besides like some insane hacks. So Ice Punch knocks us out there and it's going to come down to the wire. Electivire versus Electivire. Unfortunately, we end up winning a speed tie and winning the game. So pretty tough one for the opponent. Feel bad for them for losing that last turn tie, but it is what it is. We will take it and move on to the next. Okay, and here we have Oras. We have 5 Gen versus Shane Ghoul. Um, Oras, not a tier that I'm too familiar with, um, so let's just get right into it. Um, yeah, so we actually see a Trubbish. <laughs> One thing I want to talk about, Trubbish. Uh, I don't think I've seen that Pokemon in any of these games, so interested to see what it's going to do. Probably a Spike Stacker, if I had to guess. Um, and our team looks pretty good. I feel like Jumpluff might be able to do something versus this type of team with you know a lot of Grass Weeks, but we'll see. I'm going to see the Bibero lead versus Vibrava. Bibero actually ends up throwing up the rocks as we're going to go for a U-turn here and going hard into the jump bluff. Uh, we are going to miss a Sleep Powder there, which is a little frustrating, and that means Double Edge is going to do some big damage to us. We're going to go for a Seed Bomb, knocking them out with a crit, so I guess if that did matter, it evens out, but still unfortunate. As Perugly is going to come in now, we're going to go into Gigalith to punish that. Um, it is going to be able to knock off a Rocky Helmet, so we aren't able to force more chip on it, but it's okay, as we can get our own uh, EQ off here. Uh, doing some big damage to the Trubbish, actually. So we're going to go with Vibrava here, um, as I think the idea with that turn was not rocking, because we are going to want to defog eventually, and getting damage off is more valuable. So that works out well. They are going to go for an Explosion, denying us a defog chance, so that works out really nicely for Shane. Good play on his end, for sure. Huntail is now going to come in as we decide to sack the Jump Bluff as they end up going for an Ice Beam, and that is going to enable us to go into Politoed. So they did a good job of keeping their T-Spike up, and that's going to be very annoying for the rest of the game. So they're going to fire off a Hidden Power Electric, most likely, as we can Encore them into that, just in case they Shell Smash here, so per correct play there from 5 Gen for sure. Perugly is going to come in now, and we're going to fire off a Skull, doing some pretty big damage to them, so it's a nice play on 5 Gen's end, predicting a switch um, predicting a switch from Shane because he doesn't want to HP electric into a Vibrava that's going to enable us to just T defog T spike away. So we're going to go for the Scald there. Really heads up play. I like that a lot. As now Huntail is going to come in. We're going to go for another Scald. Um, trying to get that burn. Fortunately, we do not get it there. As they are going to Shell Smash on this turn. And I think on this turn, we end up going for another Scald. So this is a good play from both ends. Like it's, it's tricky because we could very easily Encore on this turn and. Shane would again would have been messed up there by that, but we end up predicting them not to do that and we get stuck in a tough spot. But I feel like Encore is definitely a safer play there because I think at this point we end up not losing the game outright, but uh, putting ourselves in such an awkward position because they can hit and power us, knock us out. Now we're forced to go into Perugly. Perugly takes rocks plus poison. Yes, we can fake them out, but it doesn't even knock, knock this thing out. And um, yeah, it's going to get a little tough. So Bravo is going to come in. Vibrava is going to drop to a Surf. Yes, we can knock it out with another Fake Out, but the problem is that look how many resources we had to use just to do this. And Shane still has a lot of stuff in the back. So, 
Lairon comes in now. Lairon is going to get you turned on, and Gigalith is going to come in. It is going to eat rocks plus toxic, or the 1T spike. It's going to eat a head smash. Because it was knocked off earlier, no recoil chip, and Heavy Slam is going to remove the Gigalith from play. And it's looking a little tough because Mag all these hazards are just being so problematic for us. Magmar can go for Fire Blast. It is going to knock out Lairon outright, which is pretty funny. Um, but opponent can just go into Perugly, go for a fake out, get some pretty good chip off on us. Um, and uh, that is going to basically seal the game because Sucker Punch knocks out the Magmar. Perugly can come in, but we can um, really not do much um, because Sucker Punch is going to bring it pretty low. They're going to knock into the Perugly, trying to see if Shane will like you know choke and go ghastly, but he ends up not, and that is going to be the game. So pretty actually pretty tough turn there because things might have turned out differently had Five Gen. Perhaps perhaps let's look at this last turn. Actually, this is interesting. So this goes down. 5 gen could have potentially won this game i don't know because if he fakes out here and then the next turn i don't think knock actually ends up killing ghastly depends on the item um perhaps um either way so if he faked out here and knocks out the progly that could have been the game so what the play there is from shane is to go ghastly on the fake out you know and then go from there but actually no actually i don't does it matter does it really matter because doesn't I don't know. I think I think either way we would have lost this because Shane could have just pivoted Ghastly, sack that, and then go fake out after and knock this thing out with poison plus fake out. So I'm not sure. Unless there's like a protect per ugly or something crazy like that when it comes down to speed type. But either way, I think uh, we were going to lose this game. But he had to go for the Nocturne just in case uh, Shane goes into Ghastly and maybe he can make something happen somehow, like dodging a fake out. I don't know. But yeah, that was that. Um, tough one for 5 gen, but it's all good. We can pause it there and get into the next one. Okay, and we're going straight to DPP. So Black White was not played this week. I think we ended up getting an activity win because of some substitute uh, issues. And now we have DPP. We have Haysup facing off against Procrass. So uh, should be a pretty good matchup. Um, obviously, we need to win this to win the week. So let's see how it all goes down. We're going to see the Lunatone lead versus Dustox lead. Uh, rocks are going to go up as Dustox will be able to U-turn, get some decent damage, but rocks up early is always going to be good in this type of, uh, in these tiers, old gens, um, lower tiers don't have a lot of good removals, so this is obviously good for us to be in. We're going to see a good prediction here from Procrass, um, not going for the water move unnecessarily, goes for the x Scissor correctly, and is going to catch the Grotal there, so nice play on his end. Um, we are going to pivot back into Golbat as we should be able to eat that x very very comfortably <laughs> as you can see and Lunatone of their own is going to come in and maybe try to get up rocks but we're going to get a super fang off which is nice uh, we're going to pivot into our own Lunatone as they end up going for a hidden power critting unfortunately knocking us out but that's fine because we can go into star you now and star you will be able to force this thing out with a water type move surf ends up critting in return and dust Ox goes down life orb maybe that didn't matter considering we're like life orb and we offensive but either way we'll take it uh, might have saved us one life or pit if anything so Golbat's now going to come in on a return ends up taking it very very well actually shockingly Golbat does have some pretty insane bulk as life or perugly will fail oh sorry life or persian will fail the two a ko camera up is going to come in on this turn and we're going to pivot back into star you on maybe an anticipated rocks stone edge actually comes out fails to knock us out meaning we can get a big hit off here surf is going to go uh into a pasho berry camera up which is interesting, um, as they are going to EQ and fail because we died a life orb. But Golbat can come in, Brave Bird, pick this thing off. And honestly, this Golbat's looking really, really good. Outspeeds a lot of the team here. It's 306 speed, so it outspeeds this, outspeeds this. Um, can you turn on that? Super Fang, Brave Bird, whatever. Persian will be able to like beat with um, Roost stalling its life orb. And yeah, we're looking pretty good. So Kingler comes in now. We're going to go into our Wall Rain, which ends up eating a Crab Hammer pretty well, but not great, to be honest. Just shows how powerful uh, uh, Kingler is. is we're going to make another double Grotal on Grotal now, and um, we're going to take this as an opportunity to synthesis up. So good play there. Gives us another backup water resist in case this Crab Hammer Kingler starts to get out of hand. And now we're going to protect as Body Slam comes out. And I think we're going to see a little bit of a gr No, we're not. We're going to see a Wall Rain come in. Body Slam ends up getting a hidden power off, doesn't do anything at all. Seed Bomb is going to knock this thing out, but Grotal can just go uh, for a Brave Bird. Body Slam is going to fail to really do anything, and this Golbat is really just the MVP here. It's so bulky, it hits everything so hard. We're in a really excellent spot. So Persian's going to come in now. Persian is be able to pick us off with a return, that's fine. Golbat has done its job. We can go into Giraffe Rig now. And Giraffe Rig is going to reveal to be Scarf. It's going to Psychic that. Lunatone is going to come in. 
It's we're just gonna go back in a Grodal here. We cover pretty much all options by going Grodal. 46% is actually some pretty insane damage, but it's fine because we can go for a protect, get out of range with leftovers, and knock this thing out with a uh, maybe a seed bomb. Do we have that? No, we're actually just gonna synthesis stall a little bit first. Excuse me. Then there's another hidden power comes out. Uh, we end up. Oh, that was. The, <laughs> I thought they were gonna <laughs> do it for a little. Anyway, so hidden power comes out. Seed bomb will be able to knock them out, and the giraffe rig will be able to claim uh, the last kill versus the kingler. Thunderbolt knocks it out, and Hasa picks up a win and locks us in for a win on the week. So it's been a while. I think we won the very first week, and we lost or tied the remaining weeks. So really nice to get a win in week six. So that's gonna set us up well for week seven. If we win that, we should be in playoffs. So. Hopefully all goes well. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a little bit more rush because I have I'm a little busier now and I have stuff to do, <laughs> unfortunately. So I do have to go through these games a little bit quicker. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.